And now uh, we are recognizing our speaker, Attorney Albi Tanggol. You have the floor now. Hello. Ayan, naka-unmute na po. Okay. Sige, welcome Attorney Bitangkol to our little gathering. Uh, good morning to, to everybody. Good morning. Yes, uh, well, Attorney Bitangkol is the famous columnist of Manila Times and his column is All Insight. It has all the kinds of insights that will trouble people in power. <laughs> so now he will tell us why our constitution is still our legal constitution of 1899. Thank you, Mr. Bitang, Attorney Bitangkol. Okay, so can I take the floor, Mr. Ramos? Yes, it's yours. It's okay, yours. so will this be a formal speech or can I make it informal or whatever? You can do whatever you want. Uh, okay. Uh, with, uh, <laughs> as long <laughs> as we understand. Uh, anyway, so let me make it semi-formal. All right? Uh, to the members of this August body, I do not know if I have to address you parliamentarians or what. Anyway, it is a privilege to be invited to speak before you. And ladies and gentlemen, good morning to everyone. As we all know, the 1899 Philippine Constitution, popularly known and studied in our schools as the Manolos Constitution, is our first duly crafted Filipino-made constitution. The representatives of the people, led at the time by Pedro Paterno, the president of the Congress, voted, decreed, and approved the political constitution of the Philippine Republic on January 20, 1899. And take note that it was approved and commended to take effect because it is the sovereign will of the Filipino people. This was done on January 21, 1899 by the then president of the revolutionary government, Emilio Aguinaldo. Let me take you to some of the salient points of this constitution. First and foremost is the creation of a free and independent republic. This is based on uh, Article 2 of the said constitution. Let me share you my screen. Okay? So let me take you to Article 2. Okay? It likewise recognizes the sovereignty resides exclusively in the people. Take note of this Article 3. La soberania reside exclusivamente en el pueblo. This simply means that all sovereignty resides exclusively on the people. So it cannot be with anybody else. And take note, if you will look at Article 4 or Article 4, that as early as this time, the framers of the Constitution knew the evil effects of a rubber stamp Congress. This is the collusion between the executive and the legislative branches, which we can see right now. And Articulo 4, it says here, El gobierno de la república es popular, representativo, alternative, irresponsable, and so on. This means that any two or more of these three powers shall never be united in one person or cooperation, nor the legislative power vested in one single individual. Ito po yung uh, depositarse el legislativo en un solo individuo. Why is that so? Because if you concentrate the power let's say in the executive, or you concentrate the power in one person, the president, then this will be subject to abuse. And that is what is happening right now in our country. If there is a collusion between the legislative and the executive, again, abuse can happen. Take note that the supposedly three branches of the government, the legislative, the executive and the judiciary 
are supposed to be independent of each other. What is another important point in the Manolo's Constitution? This is in Articulo 73 or Article 73, wherein the Council of the Government, El Consejo de Gobierno, is componed de un presidente y siete secretarios que tendrán de negocios extranjeros, interior, hacienda, guerra y marina, instrucción pública, comunicaciones, obreo públicos, agricultura, industrias y comercio. This simply means that the Council of the Government, based on the 1899 Constitution, is composed of the President and seven secretaries. Ito po yung foreign affairs, negocios extranjeros, Ito po yung interior, Department of the Interior, uh, Agriculture, Guerra e Marina, this is the Army and the Navy, Instruction Publico, this is the Public Education, Comunicaciones y Obras Publicas, this is the Public Works and Communications, and lastly, Agriculture and Commerce. Now, is this constitution still alive? Well, let's go back. Let's go back here. If we look at the 1899 Manolos Constitution, this is at the bottom of my screen now, okay, which was approved on January 21, 1899. Supposedly, the Philippine Organic Act of 1902 was enacted on July 1. 1902. But take note, this was done by the United States Congress, okay? Not by the Filipino people. The Law of 1960, again, this was done by the United States Congress on August 29, 1960. The next constitution that was supposedly Filipino made is the 1935 constitution. This was approved by the 1934 Constitutional Convention. And take note again, certified by the United States on March 25, 1935. So again, these three are all under the auspices of the United States of America. So the 1943 Constitution, this was done under the Japanese occupation. And so we cannot say that this is a truly independent Filipino constitution. So basically, what we now have is the 1899, the 1935, the 1973, and then the present one, which is the 1987 constitution. But ladies and gentlemen, it is my premise that the Philippines' first constitution is alive and binding. And let me tell you why in a few moments. Okay. How do you repeal a law? Normally, a new law should have a repealing clause to obliterate the old law. What is a repealing clause? The legal definition of a repealing clause is that clause in a statute prevailing, repealing a previous enactment. The word Repeal, if used as a verb, means to cancel, invalidate, or to annul. Let's take an example. If I may be making a new law, at the end of the law, I could put there a repealing clause. All laws and parts of previous laws in conflict herewith are hereby repealed. Okay, so that is very clear. Or I can be very specific to the point of the actual law that I have to repeal. So for example, I would say Act number 1234 is hereby repealed. Okay? And then there are two types of repeal. 
It can be expressed or implied. But again, a repeal simply said it's a removal or reversal of a law. A law can be repealed without a new replacement or a law can be repealed by a replacement law. So there are really two possibilities. There can also be a partial repeal. So for example, I will be repealing only certain provisions of an old law and replace it with the new provisions of the new law. Okay, a full repeal <clears throat> will occur when the entire law in itself is repealed. Okay, the types of repeal, no, it can be expressed or implied. What is the distinction? Express repeal happens when it is specifically stated in the statute to repeal an earlier statute. Again, using the example, I would say. Act number one, two, three is hereby repealed. Whereas an implied repeal ensures that when two laws are inconsistent, the newer law shall repeal the older law in so far as it is inconsistent with the newer law. Okay? Now, there is always a problem if there is only implied repeal. And these problems will arise in the future. So to avoid legislative problems and spare the court from interpreting and harmonizing the laws, implied repeals are always avoided. In fact, in the United States, its code itself, no, United States code, expressly rejects implied repeals. That is to avoid future legislative problems. And take note that our laws, most of it anyway, are patterned before the laws of the United States. So in which case, implied repeal should not be done at all. Okay. Did the 1935 Constitution repeal the 1899 Constitution? Okay, this is the 1935 Constitution. It was adopted by the Constitutional Convention on February 8, 1935, headed by then Clara M. Recto as president of the convention. If you will be reading the provisions of the 1899 Constitution and the 1935 Constitutions, there are a lot of common ones. However, there are still some provisions that sticks out from the other. The 1935 Constitution should have a revealing, a repealing clause, but surprisingly, it never had one. Okay. There was no express repeal in that constitution. Similarly, there is no repealing clause that might give effect to an implied repeal. So therefore, there is only one constitution. The 1935 constitution did not repeal the 1899 constitution. So on that logic alone, you could say that the 1899 constitution remains in force and binding and it survived the 1935 constitution. Okay. See the Navy. Okay. Now, let's go to the 1973 Constitution. This Constitution came into effect on the noon of January 17, 1973. This was after the Filipino people approved it in a referendum on January 10 to 15 of 1973. You can see here on this screen, you know, the portion the percentage of the Filipinos supposedly who approved the 1973 constitution. Okay. Let's go to Article 17 
Section 16 of Article 17, part of the transitory provisions, it clearly states, this constitution shall take effect immediately upon its ratification by a majority of the votes cast in the plebiscite called for the purpose and except as herein provided shall supersede the constitution of 1935 and all amendments thereto. Okay? So, what is the effect? The 1973 constitution superseded the 1935 Constitution. But how about the 1899? The 1899 Constitution remains there because the 1973 Constitution did not even mention it. It only superseded the 1935 Constitution. Did you get the drift? The 1935 did not overturn the 1899. The 1973 superseded the 1935. So the 1899 is still there. Okay? Now, going to the present, in the 1987 Constitution, this was ratified on February 2, 1987. And part of the transitory provisions, okay? This is now in Article 18. Section 27, it says here, this constitution shall take effect upon its ratification by a majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite held for the purpose and shall supersede all previous constitutions. Now, question, did it repeal the 1899 constitution? In my opinion, it did not. It simply superseded it. But what is the difference between repeal and superseding? Okay. I look at it online. There is a difference between the words. Okay. In repeal, it says here to recall, to summon, to suppress, or revocation, repeal of a statute. Repeal of a law or a usage. Take note of the last definition for repeal. This is the one that applies to laws and statutes. In supersede, it does not, does not say here whether it has to be repealed at all. It can be upgraded, it can be set aside, it can be replaced, or it can even be upgraded. But this is the standard definition online. So, I decided to get the definition from Black's Law Dictionary. The Black's Law Dictionary is the primary resource for legal terms. Okay? It says here, repeal the abrogation or annulling of a previous existing law by the enactment of a subsequent statute which declares that the former law shall be revoked or abrogated. And it is called express repeal. Okay? To pay the ring, there is an implied repeal. Okay? Now, what is the definition of supersede from Black's Law Dictionary? Supersede. It says it obliterate, set aside, replace, make void, inefficacious or useless. Okay? To set aside, render unnecessary, suspend or state. Now, this is the legal definition. There is a big difference between repeal and supersede. Take note that in supersede, it says you only suspend or stay. All right? So the statute is still there, but it might be suspended at the moment. There is a stay, but it is still there. It is not repealed or totally revoke. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, with all the foregoing, it is my humble opinion that the 1899 Philippine Constitution persists. Maraming salamat po.
Thank you. Palatpakan tayo. Uh, thank you, uh, Attorney Al Bitanggol. And uh, uh, anybody wants to interpolate uh, Attorney Bitanggol? But anyway, to, ano lang, no? just, uh, can I insert just five slides? Uh, no? may, okay. may I share my screen? Uh, okay, go just, ahead. Uh, about yung, yung, y y to supplement the discussion of Attorney Bitanggol about supersede. No? <laughs> just five slides lang. Okay, proceed. Uh, ito. Can, uh, can you see it? Okay. Ano nakikita nyo? It's the 1987 Constitution. Ayan ha. Merong word na supersede doon sa 1937 Constitution. Which is different from repeal ha. 1897. Pero, 1987. Oh, 19, 1987 pala no? Yun nga lang, mapapansin nyo, yung, yung sa transitory provision niya ng 1987 Constitution. From Section 1 until Section 26 ng 1987 Constitution, nababanggit yung repeal doon. Yung uh, the words uh, amend, repeal, revoke. Tapos uh, doon lang sa Section 27, biglang lumitaw yung word na supersede. In, from Sections 1 to 26 in the transitory, ah, Doon lang lumitaw sa Section 27. Tapos na nakasulat doon, shall supersede all previous constitutions. Which, bakit hindi nga ginamit yung word na repeal? It had the opportunity to do so. Supersede, nag-downshift siya. Kung baga, kumambyo siya pa, pa, pabagal. To a soft, to a, to a weaker word, which is supersede. And what does supersede mean? Uh, to sit over, no? To, you can amend, you can revise, you can repeal, you can revoke. Hindi siya supersede. Why suddenly downshift to the soft verb, to the soft verb supersede when in all previous verbs in the same context in the transitory provision uses the word amend, revise, repeal, revoke. Yung supersede, parang uh, yung literal meaning niya is you sit over. Eh. The, the, nakikita niyo yung pictures. The upper chairs supersede the lower, the chairs underneath. Did the upper chairs, uh, uh, did, the, teka, did the upper chairs Amen, revise, repeal, or revoke the, the lower chair. Alisin mo yung upper chair, may iwan doon yung lower chairs. Eh. Siguro, this is one way to, to envision supersede, no? May kita niyo dyan. Can you see the picture? Yes, sir. Ayun, the lady is superseded the man, di ba? Did she amend, <laughs> revise, revoke, repeal the man? Or did the man become more super rather than dead? The lady may even end up with the seed of the man if she continues to supersede the man. <laughs> Siguro you know what I mean, no? Ngayon, yung ano natin, yung uh, yung may, may nakikita kayong bahay kubo dyan. Yung, parang ganun muna yung 1899 Constitution, binibelittle, no? Pero actually, yung mga sumusunod na constitutions na based on 1935, para siyang malaking building na nag-collapse yung ground floor. So, if the ground floor collapses, all the second, the second floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, sixth floor will also collapse. Unlike yung 1899 Constitution na kahit kubo lang siya, kahit, kahit i-earthquake siya, ano, it, 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 it will remain standing. No? So, besides, when you supersede, when the 1987 super, superseded all previous constitutions, it superseded only the, the previous ones, 1986, 1973, 1943, 1935. But it can never supersede the 1899 Constitution because the 1899 Constitution was never the ground floor of the 1987 87 constitution na nayonig sa isang earthquake. Uh, yan lang po. Eh. Siguro on, on another ano, on another episode, uh, i-discuss natin yung ano, yung mga details nun. Uh, okay. Uh, tapos na po. Tapos okay. Na po.